Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. So I'm going to talk through current technologies to enforce RF device security policy. Let me talk through some of the products on the market and how people use them and the challenges with how they're used and some of the advantages in how they're used. And these are the content in the next few slides I've drawn from conversations I've had with various customers we had and various operators of these tools. Um, so if you Google RF device detectors, you get pictures like this. So you get devices that, that have, uh, you know, rudimentary spectrogram readers. You get handheld devices that have power readers or power meters. You get devices like this that may be even doing digital demodulation. But they, they, these are the handheld devices with either antennas attached or internal antennas that exist on the market today um, to go find RF devices. Uh, so what's good about these devices? Why do people use them? One is that they're, they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, the other is they're quick to deploy. And then I've had people tell me, you know, there's a, there's a thrill to using these handheld devices to finding a covert device. Um, you know, you're, you, you put in all this, this hard work to go find the device. When you actually find it, it can be very, very thrilling and um, gratifying. Um, but that, that kind of points to one of the issues is that it's a manual process that, that is difficult enough to give you a rush when you actually find one of these devices. Um, on the other hand, I've heard um, from various professionals that there's some challenges with using these kinds of devices. So the first, the first bullet is that it's, it's hard to find devices based on just power. So if I have a, a reading, you know, like the one on the left, um, that is just a power reading, and I get a reading in this case of say 88, you know, that probably indicates there's a device somewhere in my vicinity. Um, but it, it, it condenses a lot of information in such a way that it's hard to understand what's going on. So if the left spectrogram is the actual picture of my 2.4 gig band or my RF environment, it's clear there's lots of devices all over the spectrum. And some of these devices are hopping around in frequency. If the, if the only reading I have is, a, is an aggregate power reading, it's impossible to know how many devices I'm looking for, um, you know, where they are and these kinds of issues. Um, so that's, that's understanding where my signal is in frequency. Another challenge is understanding where it is in space. So even with a handheld device that you can move or that you can point at things, it's very challenging to find RF devices unless you understand RF propagation at a very low level and you have a lot of experience with these devices. So in this picture, I'm showing an emitter, this blue, blue sphere, and I'm showing all the propagation paths through the environment. And so say you're trying to do signal detection from this point, you might point your handheld detector or your antenna at this wall and you're, you'll be homing in on device energy. You know, you'll have a kind of a device energy peak because there is actually a signal bouncing off this wall. Um, but you may go break up a meeting, a sensitive meeting in this room looking for a device that's not actually in this room. It's the device is way over here. What you've, what you've homed in on is just a reflection of the true signal. So unless you're, you're, um, you've got a lot of expertise in this, it's likely that you're not going to be able to use these tools effectively. Uh, the third issue is that signals are, uh, devices are just not that chatty, um, especially devices that are, that are trying to be covert. So, you know, assuming that you, you do understand how to do this and you're willing to take the time, it becomes very, very tedious to stand there for eight minutes in between pings in order to home in on the signal and, and, and track it down. Um, and even if you're willing to do that, in between those eight minutes, there's probably other devices transmitting. And so it's very hard to distinguish whether you're still looking for the same device or you've been distracted by another device. And it's really a game of whack-a-mole that's, that's very hard to win. Um, so in general, it's hard. You, you have got time uncertainty. You've got uncertainty around space. You've got uncertainty in frequency. It makes it very hard to use um, these handheld tools, point in time, point in space, point in frequency tools to find things. Um, second issue is that even for really skilled operators, for some of the reasons I just described, you're going to miss a lot of devices. So if you graduate up in your, in your tool set and you're willing to spend six or seven figures on your TSCM or device finding kit, um, you still have the same sorts of problems. So even with an advanced spectrum analyzer, um, you're able to maybe differentiate frequencies with more granularity. Maybe you've got even got some history view. But if you only have one device, um, you still have the same problems I discussed before. And with these really advanced tools, now you need a really advanced operator to understand where the device is, um, to understand how to translate these views into actionable device intelligence. You know, so you may have a workflow like this where you're capturing spectrum data and you've got a very advanced user who's parsing these spectrograms to understand where devices are. Um, but you're still, uh, you're still gonna be only finding one device at a time. 
And problem number three, even when you find a device, um, there's no history or identity, identity of that device. So you've used your advanced tools, you've used all of your expertise, you've got a device. The next questions you're gonna ask yourself is now what? Where has this device been? Has it been in a sensitive area? What kind of data um, do I need to secure more? Or, or what kind of data, uh, what kind of rooms has this device been in where there's been sensitive data? Do I need to secure that data more? Or do I need to assume that it's been compromised? Um, what you're really gonna wish you could do is track this device or understand where it's been in your facility over time. I mean, you can't even answer a simple question like when did this device first come to my facility? And the last bullet is there's no way to implement or automate policy rules. So with all these tools, what you'd really like to do is automate this process and have device policy written in simple terms. You know, if a device pairs with a network, um, send an email alert to the, the security personnel. You'd like to do that instead of having this super heavyweight process of having experts in the loop at every step of the way.